Hi, my name is Tomasz and you're watching Casual DIY channel. In today's video we'll be talking about how to stabilize your wood, what is the stabilization process, how to do it and what you need to actually do it. So if you're interested stay tuned and watch the video. What is the stabilization process? Basically what you're going to be using, in my case for example anyway, I'm going to be using cactus juice stabilizing resin from Turntex. Now to my knowledge there isn't many options when it comes to stabilization and by far this is the most popular and widely available. But what the stabilization process means? Well basically for example if you've got a beautiful piece of wood like this poplar burrow it looks absolutely amazing, the grain goes all over the place and obviously uh, there is a bit of um, dried rot in it as well and it, it does look fantastic. If you stabilize the piece of wood, what you're actually doing, you're infusing the piece of wood with resin. So you make the uh, piece of wood a lot harder, a lot denser, easier to turn on a lathe, but that's not all. As you know, wood with changes of moisture in the air changes as well. So it contracts and retracts depending on the moisture levels of outside. But when you actually use the cactus juice resin to stabilize it, that will stop. You will lock it in place as is and it will not be affected by moisture to about 99% of the cases if you do and follow the process correctly. So as you can see, um, the uses and the advantages of stabilized wood, they're actually quite great. And the amount of projects you can do with stabilized wood is absolutely huge and your imagination is the limit here. Most of the cases, they would actually be casted with resin to add absolutely fantastic and unique features to it. As we know, resin hates moisture and through going to the stabilizing process we're actually getting rid of the moisture and it's a lot easier to actually cast a piece of wood within resin and then you can make your pen blanks knife scales bottle stoppers or whatever else you can come up with with fantastic and amazing looks but obviously wooden jewelry as well with stabilized wood you don't have to worry so much about when people are wearing it the wood will stay and look fresh for a lot lot longer and the quality increases with that product so it's definitely worth the while. On top of that you can add another technique uh, to stabilizing wood. You can actually dye the wood and protect that collar that's in the wood and lock it in place. To my knowledge you can use alumilite dyes with uh, cactus juice. Well I actually bought the Turntex dyes specially designed for this type of uh, resin. Um, there is far far greater number of these but when it comes to dyeing, double dyeing or even triple dyeing, adding amazing looks to your wood, that will be another video down the road. So make sure to subscribe to my channel if you're interested in that so you won't miss that video in the future. One thing that the stabilizing process does not do is filling any voids. So for example, if I had some voids inside of this block, it will not fill them in unless they are microscopic tiny voids then by all means but anything larger this is not the product to do so if you want to fill some voids in a piece of wood you just use a normal casting epoxy so a couple of features with regards this um, this resin it will penetrate your piece of wood fantastically right to the core and that's what we want this resin is heat activated which means you will have to bake the piece of wood um, to a set temperature which we're going to touch on later on to make sure that the resin hardens. This resin is a little bit different to any other resins. Usually you've got uh, two parts A and B, one is the hardener and one is the uh, epoxy or resin or whatever. You mix them together and then you've got certain amounts of casting time to do before the um, resin hardens. In this case it's a little bit different. You basically got one liquid. As I mentioned before it's heat activated so you need to bake your piece of wood. But in theory it actually comes with two parts. You will get a small bottle of an activator that you need to pour in the main bottle. Now as it is now 
that has a very, very long um, shelf time. When you actually put the activator in the main chamber, you've got up to six months of life shelf for this product. After that, it will be no good. So that's one of the things that you need to remember when actually buying this product. As I mentioned before, it's not the cheapest. But there's another positive side of this product. So basically, we're going to uh, soak our wood in this product and we're going to go through the process that I'm going to talk about in a second. But whatever is left from the cactus juice that's not been used, not been soaked up by the wood, you can actually put it back in the bottle, put it back in the container so you're not wasting any of your product and you can reuse it as much as you want. But what do we actually need for the stabilizing process apart from the resin? Well, obviously, a piece of wood that you want to stabilize, but it actually doesn't have to be wood. It could be pine cones or anything else that's fairly brittle and fairly soft, and you can transform it into a much harder and denser object. So, again, your imagination is the limit. Next, uh, a very important step, this piece of wood needs to be bone dry. By saying that, I mean 0% moisture. And how to achieve that on a piece of wood, I've actually done a separate video about that. So if you're interested, I'll link it up above and down below for you to check out. If you need to know that, go and have a look now and obviously come back to this video. Next, we're going to need a vacuum chamber. Now, they can be fairly expensive, but you can actually pick up a cheaper versions on eBay. And to be fair, I do prefer them because the containers you actually get, it's basically a large pot, so you can put a lot more of your wood or wood that's, let's say, oversized or in an awkward shape. So um, from my experience, I recommend check out your eBay. You can probably pick up a nice set for a fraction of the price. Saying that, you have to consider that probably the quality may not be the best. Obviously, the core of this setup is a vacuum pump. Now, as I mentioned, I only got a cheap version of it. Um, this will do the job. It's fine. It may take a little bit longer. Um, so that's what you have to consider. Uh, if you've got, more, obviously, more powerful one would be a lot better. I'm not going to go into any more specifics uh, about the, the whole setup here. If you want me to, I can make a separate video about it. Just let me know down below in the comments. And obviously, you need the chamber. Now, as I mentioned before, this is basically a stainless steel large pot. And for me, it's absolutely perfect. It comes with a gauge, so you can see your PSIs, how much pressure you've got. And in this scenario, I've actually got the release valve here, so I'll leave it open. And obviously, that unlocks the vacuum. In this scenario, uh, the lid is quite important, to be absolutely honest with you. Um, this is actually acrylic. It's, um, I believe, it's about two centimeters in thickness. And obviously, you've got the rubber collet on top of it, so you can preserve the vacuum inside of the pot. Now, because it's acrylic, it can actually react with, um, with cactus juice. So you have to be careful uh, when, you're, when you're pulling the vacuum that the resin will not be touching um, the lid if you've got an acrylic, if you've got a plastic one. So in my suggestion, um, a glass one would be a lot better. But again, they're a lot dearer. So with this, you just have to be really careful. And the last piece of the puzzle is basically an oven. Now, as I mentioned before, um, cactus juice is heat activated resin. On the instructions of how to use it, the temperature you need to achieve to uh, harden your piece of work is 200 Fahrenheit. That's uh, 93 degrees Celsius for between two to three hours. Now, the temperature is actually very important. If, it's, if the temperature that you're going to be baking the piece of wood will be too low, the resin will not cure. But if it will be too high, it will cure outside, but inside of the wood block, it will remain untouched and unchanged. So basically, you're going to ruin um, your piece of wood. One of the things I believe is actually going a lot over the recommended temperature is far worse than being under. So if you go for 195 degrees Fahrenheit or 90 degrees Celsius or anything in that region, uh, you're basically extending the time that your wood will be in the oven. But I think it, it delivers a better outcome. Rather, obviously, if you can achieve 200 Fahrenheit on your oven, that's fine. Um, but usually, 
uh, what you're going to be using is something like this something like I've got which is a toaster oven where achieving the set temperature is actually very very difficult so as you can see uh, achieving the right temperature is very important 200 degrees Fahrenheit or 93 degrees Celsius now um, I do not recommend at all um, using your oven in your house don't do that it's um, it's definitely not the way forward because you can ruin your oven and obviously the smell it is harsh chemicals so you don't want that in your house so what I've got and probably everybody else that uses this technique uh, I've got a toaster oven um, for this specific task now usually a they are not too expensive and b well it's actually hard to tell the temperature on these guides so you definitely need to invest in some um, in some oven thermometers to guide you where your temperature is so that will give me a good indication of what the temperature is in the oven itself right so that's the crucial information that you need and now it's time to jump into the process itself so you can exactly see step by step on how you can do this the first thing we need to do is to mix the activator with the cactus juice itself um, give it a really good shake uh, it is recommended and I would as well to leave it for a couple of hours and then shake it again and make sure the um, activator dissolves in the resin and then you're gonna be good to go right then so the resin is ready to do its thing and I've got my wood ready that we're going to stabilize and obviously as you can see it's still wrapped up just to make sure there's no moisture getting in those blocks so let's whack them in the pot now obviously when we're going to be adding the cactus juice we have to remember that we need to add at least an inch over um, basically the wood that we've got in the pot why is that well because the uh, resin will be absorbed by the wood and the level of, um, of the resin will go down and what we don't want to have is a piece of wood sticking over the level of resin so we need to make sure that during this process we've got enough resin in the pot another thing that we have to be aware of is that the the wood when we initially pour the resin in will actually float so we need to weigh it down somehow or shim it in I'm using some metal tubings and metal parts to do that and at this stage what I like to do is actually leave it for an hour or two and just let it soak in it's not a necessary um, thing to do but for me uh, I just I don't know I feel it was gonna work better that way after an hour or two I'm gonna come back and we're gonna whack on the vacuum on in short what's gonna happen you're gonna see the air bubbles coming out from the wood um, and you're gonna see a foam forming at the top of the resin now this foam will actually grow and expand and you have to be careful for that foam not to actually reach your top of your setup if it's gonna go in the air outlet and will get to your pump uh, then basically you're gonna be in trouble and you're well you may lose your pump so always make sure um, for that foam not to reach the top of your container forming of the foam may actually take a few minutes um, so basically we have to be vigilant and we have to be conscious that uh, the foam needs to be managed it usually takes a few minutes and after that um, you can just lock your pressure uh, you can lock your vacuum in and just wait until the air bubbles actually stop coming up when you notice that there is no more air bubbles coming through the wood um, you're gonna release uh, the pressure inside of the container obviously do it very slowly now what that will do it will actually force the resin inside deeper in the wood um, in normal cases you can just uh, leave it at that and that would be fine but I like to do this process twice just to make sure uh, I've got the full coverage of the resin inside of the wood block so basically I would repeat the process again I'll put the vacuum on uh, wait until the, there is no air bubbles coming out and again release the pressure right then guys so for the air bubbles to actually finally stop coming out from the wood it took about five hours and the rule is you need to leave the wood um, inside 
without the vacuum for twice as long as it was actually on a full vacuum to get the air out. So I basically just left it overnight. So this is now ready and we can proceed to the next stage. So now it's time to take the wood out and uh, basically make sure to try to get rid of as much of the resin from the pieces of wood because when you put it in the oven um, <laughs> the wood will leak and uh, the resin anyway but the less you've got on the outside the smaller mess it will be to actually sort out later on I'm actually going to wrap it in an aluminium foil and um, that step some people don't do that they just put it in the oven as it is um, it's either or both ways are fine and you will have to clean up either way for me this way is just a little bit cleaner for the oven itself but uh, if you're not bothered about that you actually do not have to use the tin foil and all the resin that's still left in the pot you can reuse it as many times as you want so that will go back to uh, the tank I had that it actually came from and you can wash the pot with soap and water and it will be absolutely clean and absolutely fine the temperature of the oven is set to 200 degrees Fahrenheit or just just slightly below it so it's time to put the wood in and with the preset temperature I'm gonna leave it to bake for around four to five hours again if you leave it too short and um, basically the resin will not cure and um, in this case you cannot over bake it so the more you do it it will not harm it so it's always best to do it a little bit longer and it is recommended a recommendation is two to three hours minimum how we're gonna find out they're actually ready when you uh, basically undo the aluminium foil if there is any liquid residue that means it's not done if the blocks are still tacky that means they're not done but after four hours 200 degrees they should be all fine Look at that, absolutely beautiful. Hard as a rock. Obviously, it will need a bit of clean up. And that's how the process of stabilization would work. So as you've seen, it's actually not too bad. You just need to follow a certain steps to achieve the correct results. And, and this piece of wood, it's hard as a rock and you can use it for so many projects and it looks absolutely fantastic. And the properties are so much better. A bit of white spirit and we'll have a look what we can actually see. Look at that, it's absolutely beautiful. So um, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it was some value to you. If it was, drop me that like button down below. If you've got any more questions, you know where the comment section is. And in the next video, we're gonna be exploring double dyeing and even triple dyeing. So adding extra colors to your pieces of wood. And that's quite interesting. So if you don't wanna miss that video, make sure to subscribe to my channel. Or if you want to support my channel even more, you can actually head to my Patreon account pledge um, a small donation to my channel and support my channel uh, help it grow and obviously keep the lights on but for today that's all thank you very much for watching and i hope to see you on my next resin adventure till then take care